Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. I wanted to share my a daily profile I've been using on this processor, which is hard to beat. Uh, so, gaming predominantly likes memory overclocking. So I kind of just went the route of running this thing with a higher stable memory profile and a stock CPU setting. Uh, so as far as how the CPU is set up, this is a 13900KS. And this 13900KS runs totally stock, right? Totally stock, nothing crazy going on. It runs at 5.6 and it will boost to six gigahertz on two of the P cores you can see right there. Auto voltages, load line is one. And it is a performer. There's no power limits or anything whatsoever. And I'll tell you, the, the voltage under load is what is most impressive. Uh, for this chip here. So if you take a look at the V core, you can see it's, you know, idling at the lower voltage. It's about hitting the max at like 1.296 volts. Um, but we're gonna go run Cinebench R23 here, and we're gonna see what that load voltage is, okay? If you look here, you can see that load voltage is 1.137. That right there is impressive, very impressive. And, um, as far as power consumption, I think it's 235 watts. I can actually get it down uh, less than that even. Um, but that that power right there is just is just unbelievable. It, it's awesome performance, and this is DDR5 8600, uh, and this is actually stable. This is the OG Z790 Apex. And this is the memory profile that I'm running on this CPU right here. Uh, so we'll take a look here. We got that case latency 40, 8600, and this is TM5 stable for however long. And uh, it's just, it's great. It's a really fast gaming profile. Of course I can go get that, you know, 6.1 gigahertz on the CPU, 4.8 on E-cores and run a, you know, five gigahertz ring, but it's not really worth it. Um, you see those memory temps are <laughs> really cool. Uh, they're running uh, 15 and 16 Celsius, um, but only 1.5 volts. So very good, very low voltage for 48 gig kit. These are 7,200 sticks and I've got a DDR5 8600. Um, but anyways, I've noticed that if you just run the CPU stock and overclock your memory, it is gonna perform as good as a fully overclocked CPU in games and stuff like that. Uh, you lose a little on the multi-threaded and stuff, but it's not really worth it. It is not worth it at all. And this is just so efficient. I mean, you're talking about a CPU that uses 230 watts and that's, that's amazing. I mean, that's great. That's fantastic. That's really all you need. Uh, we're gonna go to the dynamic boost uh, profile here. And you can see those P cores hitting their six gigahertz on two, core two and three. And the rest of them, you know, all cores just 5.6 and the E cores are all 4.3. Uh, but to be able to maintain this at 230-ish watts and 1.137 volts is solid. And this is DDR5-8600. It is a, a really good performer for games. Uh, the voltages are very reasonable, and I like it. It's kind of hard to go and want to overclock it to the moon when it just becomes so inefficient. Um, so I know that if I overclock this CPU to 6.1 gigahertz and 4.8 on the E-cores, it uses about 380 watts and scores about 45.5 in R23. So it gains about 10%. But that power usage, you know, is, let's see, one point. Yeah, so we're talking like, ooh, 230 times 1.6. Let's see. About 68% more power, somewhere around there and it's only about 10% faster. So, you know, you determine if that trade-off is gonna be worth it, whether you have a 14900K, a 13900K, or 13900KS, um, but running these stock, unbelievable. 
Um, and I can actually get this down a little more than this. So I can start, because this is auto voltage with load line one, I can start undervolting it. And I think I can get about another 15 or 20 out of it. Um, but that's kind of pushing it. Like how it is now, it's stable in anything regardless, and it'll always be really efficient. Uh, but anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. I just wanted to share how this 13 out of KS does just run stock, you know? It is a really well-performing CPU.